Celtics with another dominant playoff performance last night against the Cavs. The C's beating Cleveland by 25 points in game one. Just about everything going right for the green right now. Here's a look. This is the Celtics fourth win this postseason by 20 or more points. That ties a franchise record and we're only one game into round two. Jalen Brown playing one of the best games of his playoff career last night. Derek White continues to play like a star. He's averaging over 29 points in his last three games. Even the bench playing well with guys like Luke Cornett and Patriot, Peyton Pritchard contributing. The only real issue, Jason Tatum's shooting, averaging 40.6% from the floor in the postseason, including 7 for 19 last night. Yeah, Jason Tatum has been ice cold and not in the way we want him to be. Hello and welcome to our Bella Early Edition. I am Trini Casey. Eddie, before you jump down my throat and call me a hater, I do not think Jason Tatum needs to be scoring 40 or 50 a game because that would mean something has gone terribly wrong with the Celtics and they need heroics. But to pretend like you don't need your star to score, well, that's refusing to see the forest for the trees. Jason Tatum is not shooting the ball well, like at all. He's ranked 22nd in postseason scoring. He's averaging 21.2 points per game. His three-point shooting is downright atrocious at 25%. I will say this, though. Tatum has adjusted like a champ. Rather than four shots, he's finding other ways to impact the game. On a night last night, when he was 7 for 19 from the field, he also grabbed a team-high 11 rebounds, dished out five assists, and blocked three shots. But my concern is this. If, not when, the supporting cast has an off night, will Tatum be able to pick them up? He's certainly capable, but so far this postseason, he's had trouble finding the bottom of the net, which will end up being an issue. It's a matter of when, not if. But while I am worried, Tatum and the C's do not appear to be. I think he's uh, doing a great job of taking what the defense gives him and finding any way to impact the game on both ends of the floor. And, uh, you know, that's what we need him to be, and I think he's doing a really good job of it. I think he's becoming a playmaker, or he's being a playmaker. Uh, not that he's being the sacrificial lamb, but, um, you know, he's making a lot of the right plays. Um, he takes his chances where people are going to double-team him, and, and he's going to get, you know, he's going to take some of those shots, but um, I think he's getting everybody open looks. It's just like the casuals who think, you know, it's all about just the shots, but, like, uh, there's so many different areas he can affect the game, and if he only ends up with, with 18 points, but, like, can we get a win by 25 points, but... That's a, he's a, he was very impactful. See, I'm not just a casual. I pointed out all those other things that Jason Tatum did. For more, let's bring in NBA champion Eddie House, Boston Globe's Gary Washburn, and Hardy from 90.5. The Sports Hub, we would like you to join this conversation as well. How concerned are you by Tatum's postseason shooting struggles? Easy for me to say. Go to NBCSports.com slash early edition. Scan the QR code right there on your screen and cast your vote. Right now, it's kind of middle of the road. I'm like, uh, slightly, I'm a little worried. Okay, you're giving me side eye. Why are you giving me? I mean, there's a little <laughs> bit, right? I mean, he's not shooting the ball well. I'm, at all. I'm concerned about his approach. He usually goes, he's best when he goes inside out, when he attacks the paint, gets to the free throw line, then the three-point line, you know, opens up for him. He's trying to get himself going from the three-point line. He took a couple of pull-up threes last night. I just, I'm, I'm not, his approach is funky right now. He needs to get to the free throw line, get to the rim, get some easy points, then those threes will start falling. So I'm not a hater, ready? No, no, but I, what I think, <laughs> I, I want to give you some pushback on that. I think the, the part that we're all missing is that every team's defense is geared to stop him and they're not allowing him to get into the paint or get easy shots. Now, that could be on the coaching staff, that could be on him going, hey, give me some post-ups, give me some easier baskets to start off earlier. But at the same time, you don't want to do that to de at the detriment of the team and the flow of the offense because last night, I mean, yeah, he didn't shoot the ball well, but we still won by 20. Didn't shoot the ball well. He only took nine shots in the closeout game against Miami. We went by 30. To me, that is more that, that's more impressive than, okay, if we only won by five or we won by six, then we could say, well, it's a handful of possessions that he needs to be making shots. But it's not that. He's making the right plays. He's rebounding the ball. You talked about how he had three blocks. I mean, I, I think he's doing everything that he's supposed to do. And when it does come time for him to knock down shots, I believe in Jason Tatum. I believe that he will eventually start knocking down those shots because he'll have those easy matchups. I guess, Harry, where I get a little more nervous <clears throat> than Eddie is we all know that he can, but he's not the most consistent shooter. And when he starts out cold and hasn't found a rhythm, that makes me wonder what's going on. Well, I think that's a function of the playoffs being a different animal. And the defense locks down, like Eddie said. And what Gary said about the order, I think is really interesting. Instead of trying to work your way inside out, he may be starting outside. 
What I fear is that he gets frustrated. And you see it every once in a while. You can almost set your watch by it when he decides at some point in the game, I'm going to back these guys down into the paint and I'm going to shoot no matter what. And that's when he refuses to do any of the stuff we're talking about. He said, I'm going to take this to the rim. And when you're drawing the other team's best coverage and their best defenders, uh, the frustration aspect of it is what I hope he doesn't fall into. But I'm not worried. I don't think he's I think he's matured enough past the point where he's going to allow himself to get frustrated to the point where it's going to cost them big, especially down the stretch. But are you worried something's wrong and that he's not that he's not able to find his shot? And he really hasn't been able to find his shot consistently at all yet against two so far inferior teams. I, as inferior as they are, they're still playoff teams. And I, I revert back to what Eddie said. He's getting the best defenders from the opposition. So if there's going to be anything in a game uh, that is the variable from one to the next that's going to affect your shot, it's going to be drawing your opponent's best defense. And I think that's what we've seen. Eddie, consistency has been an issue for him. How does he find a rhythm? How does he get into a flow? I think he just plays. Just continue to play the way he plays and, and lean on his teammates. The more his teammates play well, the, the more he'll see more gaps. Because the, in, in that clip we just watched right there, every time that he even went to the basket, it'd be three bodies around him. Even when he had an ISO, here comes somebody else. So it's all eyes are on him, hands are everywhere. So he's been deferring and trusting his teammates. Well, that's the reason why they got uh, Drew Holiday. That's the reason why Derek White got traded for. That's the reason why they went and got Porzingis. That's the other reason why they signed Jalen Brown to this long extension. When people didn't think that this was work, this is the reason why. He can defer he doesn't have to be the guy every single night it could be anybody it could be any it, it, Derek White had the 38 he had the 25 last night it was Jalen Brown so to me I think he's doing a fantastic job of because he does have the right of being the best player on the team to go out there and get 30 shots and be pissed that he's not getting them but he is deferring and he's playing the right basketball winning basketball Gary, can you win a title if Jason Tatum continues to shoot 25 from beyond the arc and 40 yeah, overall? Uh, maybe not against Minnesota. Maybe you got Oklahoma City. He's got to be better. But also, they can get him involved earlier. There's been possessions in the first quarter. He's sitting in the corner because he's watching Jalen do his thing because Jalen always gets off the fast starts. And Jason's got his hands on his hips. Like, he knows the ball's not going to him. Now, I'm not saying he's doing anything wrong, but he's got to be more active early going. Get a couple of buckets going early. I think it's about confidence, and I know you could see him trying to get himself going from the three-point line. He sees the open three, the pull-up. Let me get myself going there. I think attacking the paint, getting to the free-throw line, and then that three-point line will open, and then obviously he's a streaky shooter. He's not maybe as consistent as you like, but streaky. All right. Well, 54% of you agree with Hardy and Eddie. You're not worried at all. Stick with NBC Sports Boston all throughout the NBA playoffs. Our coverage of Game 2 against the Cavaliers starts at 6 o'clock on Thursday.